so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gospel is the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way, for he speaks, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm here to tell you, if you think you're going to heaven by anything but by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to find a sign that says, road closed, detour, hell forward. Because God will not allow you into his holy presence with the sin condition that you got. The sin condition that will give you death, for the wages of sin is death. Jesus said, I am the way. There is a one way sign to heaven, and that is by the Lord Jesus Christ. No other way. You think anything else is going to get you to heaven, you're going to find a big red sign that says, stop. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus. John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the love of God that I just read to you. The love of God that He saw that you have a need which you can't meet, which is called salvation, which is called getting out of damnation, which is getting out of condemnation. The disease that you have, that all have, is called sin. It's a terminal condition which brings forth death. Everybody says has the same nature in them called death. And you're going to die because you are a sinner. What you do with your sins will determine the place of eternal rest or eternal damnation. No one, no one who dies without the blood of Jesus Christ, R.I.P.s. There is no rest in peace when you die without Jesus Christ. Let's get the truth. Let's get the facts. Let's stop painting things over. Sin is a serious condition that will put you into a devil's hell forever. And you're not going to hear this message on any Sunday morning, on any radio station, and most of your pulpits in America, if not throughout the world. There is no rest to a man that rejects Jesus Christ as his Savior. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. From what? Listen, Christian, you don't want me to preach hell. What are they to be saved from? Amen. I'm here to preach what the Bible says and Jesus says. What would Jesus do? He preached about hell. It is a condition that you will go to, that you are going to right now, without receiving Christ as your Savior. For we continue in John chapter 3, the love of God that He has a medicine, He has a prescription, He has your need already sought out and already prescribed for you to believe today. I don't like that hell preaching, I don't like that loudness, I don't like your tone. You'll like it better when you enter to the gates of hell wishing you can come back and do what I'm telling you to do. I'm warning you. I'm warning you right now as you go down the road. As you enter into the road that you think you're going to heaven, the bridge is out. And that bridge is only sought by Calvary, by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the three days. That proves who Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is God, and God is Jesus Christ. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. Any other way called religion, any other way called money, any other way called works, any other way called unbelief will not get you a bridge across into heaven. It will get you the eternal lakes of fire, and just because you don't believe in God, just because you don't believe in the heaven, just because you don't believe in hell, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. He's still your God. And it's funny, when you read Luke chapter 4, when Jesus is talking to Satan, he says, the 
and your God one day will fall down before Jesus Christ and say, Thou art the Lord. One time in your life you will proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. You better proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Lord by the Holy Spirit today. It's called the U.S. Constitution. You can prepare today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and announce Him as your Savior. Or at the great white throne judgment, you can be prepared to be rejected by Jesus Christ as you rejected Jesus Christ and still announce Him Lord as He catches you off into the lake of fire for all eternity. And you can't just keep on going about your business. He'll go away. I'll drown him out. I'll get my music. I'll do my business. I'm here to tell you these words will be going into your ears, down into your heart. And one day you'll stand before God, I hope, say. Or if you stand before God, the great white throne judgment, you'll say, God, I never knew. And this day will be brought up a recording of what the gospel is brought to you. You are without excuse. And I know by your testimony that you can hear me. For the love of God, He has given you a way. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. Why was there a Jesus Christ? that you may be saved. Christ did not come down to hang out with the homeboys. Christ did not come down to chat. Christ did not come down to fool around. Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, the offer of eternal salvation came and died upon that cross and was buried and rose again that you might be saved. You might be saved today. God is not willing that any should perish. God has sent people like us to go in off the streets and preach the gospel to every creature that you may know what God expects you to do. God expects you to turn and repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are in a dying day of Christianity. And when I mean Christianity, I mean those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior are speaking out. We stand out from the world. We stand out from the dead devil. We stand out from sin to bring you the pure word of the Lord Jesus Christ that you need to be saved. And you need salvation now because you don't know when your last breath is going to happen. Your entrance into the eternal life may be this afternoon. And you can't push the redo button. You can't restart like a video game. Once you die, you die. That's it. And if you enter the gates of hell, you're not coming out. A couple weeks ago, if you were here, I preached to you about the man that was in hell, according to Jesus Christ. But today, I am telling you that there are gates of hell. There are people in there because they have disbelieved, they have rejected what God is offering His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But I am telling you that there is an eternal hope that you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get your sins washed, get your sins clean, repent of your sins, be sorry for your sins, turn to the living God and be saved. God is not willing that any should perish. He does not want you to send you into hell. Hell, Jesus Christ said in Matthew, was made for Satan and his angel. But because you want to buddy up, because you want to rebel against God, you want to join His side, you will go to His same destination. Satan and his angels can never change where they're going, but God is offering to you a chance to change where you're going. In the Bible, there is an afterlife. The afterlife in the Bible is heaven or hell, and that's it. <clears throat> there is no purgatory. There is no soul sleep. There is no coming back at the cockroach so I can step on you.
you and kill you again and come back as a minnow and have a shark eat you and come back as something else to be eaten again. There is heaven and there is hell. That's all there is. Heaven is entered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed upon Calvary. Hell is by rejecting the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was shed at Calvary. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. According to the Bible, if you are a Christ rejecter, you're not going to hell. You're already there. As the Bible says for a born again Bible believing Christian, I'm not going to heaven. I'm already seated in heavenly places. My body hasn't gotten there yet. My body has not received the full reward of God's inheritance of painless, sufferingless, of sinless, of careless perfection by the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, your body, by rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, has not yet received the full pain that you deserve for rejecting Jesus. Your body has not received the full torment yet. You think your life is troubling? You think your life is miserable? You think your life is ruined? You think you got pain? You wait till you enter a place for all eternity where a pharmacist cannot give you no pills, where a pharmacist cannot give you no medication. You will have no mercy, no grace. Listen, Satan does not ever offer mercy and grace. And God is offering you mercy and grace right now to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, not to enter into devil's reign, not to enter a place of miserableness, not to enter a place of torment, but into a place of peace with the God that created you. There's a muffler that's louder than I am. So. And. If you have not ever believed the gospel. If you have not ever heard the gospel. You have never heard about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Let me tell you. Let me tell you a verse right now. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hearing my lips from the Holy Bible. If you have never heard about Jesus Christ, you have heard about Him now, and you are now entered into the gates of hell. You have not come forth. You have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not put your trust into God's Son for your soul. Not only have I declared the way, not only have I declared the truth, not only have I declared the life that the Lord Jesus Christ, not only did I declare there is no way to the Father but by Jesus, I have brought you into a life of the decision. A decision right now is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or go about what you're doing. And if you choose not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now, by my mouth, condemned. You are without excuse. And you don't even realize how hard that this message is, and as you go about and just reject it and think, oh, I'm okay, he's just an idiot. You don't realize. You have been blinded by the foes of, of God, by Satan to just shut up, just let him go, just let him speak. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Toot the horn, everything like that. Raise your mufflers. But what I'm speaking right now is the eternal words of life. And when you think I'm speaking nice and loud, we'll bring those mufflers for you all the time. We'll bring the motorcycles. You ought to be thankful that I'm speaking loud. You ought to be thankful I'm trying to speak clear. You ought to be thankful I'm standing on the street corner with a Bible and not a beer. 
You ought to be thankful I'm standing on the street corner with the Word of God and not a constant. You better be thankful I'm standing here with the Lord Jesus Christ rather than Satan. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. I have brought to you in commerce money, exchanges, stores. I have brought to you light. And let me tell you something. If it wasn't for God's light, you wouldn't have your watermelons. You wouldn't have your tomatoes. You wouldn't have your green beans without the light of God. Without God as a creator, you wouldn't even have yourself. You wouldn't be here without God the creator. No me the Big Bang, that's in the end. We are bringing to you the life of the Lord Jesus Christ in your dark and miserable life to bring you hope, to bring you the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried. Many of your religions had somebody who died. Many of your beliefs have somebody or someone who has been buried. And yet the Bible proclaims by the scriptures on the third day he arose again. The greatest news, the greatest headlines was proclaimed by the angel to Mary. He's not here. He is risen. And that's what separates Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, from all your religions. Joe Smith is still in the grave. All the popes are still in the grave. Buddha is still in the grave. Muhammad is still in the grave. But Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for you to come to him and say, Jesus. I'm a miserable sinner. That guy says, I need to believe on you, and I don't know what, I don't know how, but I want to believe in you. I want eternal life. I want you. I do not want to go to hell. I want to live with you. I want to trust in your sacrifice, your blood, what you've done for me on that place called Calvary. It's that simple. We bring light. We are shedding light. But you don't want the light. You want to have nothing to do with the light because you are in your wickedness. You still in your sin. You still enjoy what you want to enjoy. You do not want to choose God. You do not want God. God is going to ruin your life. God is going to make you miserable. God is going totally to go berserk on you. And your life is so wonderful without God today. How many pill bottles do you got? How many six packs are you looking forward to? But your life is better in the, in the miserable distance that you live today than what God has to offer you. God has a place of no pain. That means that's not today. Let me tell you, salvation ain't going to clear up your condition today. It will change your destination. It will change from, from hell to heaven. It will change of painlessness, of sorrowlessness. Your abiding after your death, that will be changed. Oh, what interest God puts into you when you come to Him. When you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the interest that God puts into you, no worldly bank could ever match. 
the message we are preaching today is about salvation. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about what you need. And we are holding to the fact is that today, hearing these words, as much as you do not want to hear these words, You are without excuse when you stand before God one day. We come to you with the words of life. We come to you with eternal life. We come to you that you may not perish. We come to you with the message that God has in His Bible. It is not my words. I have been quoting from you from a King James Absolutely free 
no charge. You need to be a sinner, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God, there is none righteous, no, not one. But again, as, as I'm preaching to you the gospel, what you need to do, you need to realize, according to John chapter 3, as you are hearing this big mouth, as you are hearing this loud mouth, you have right now deposited yourself into a place that God has never intended for you to go. God never intended men to go into hell, according to Jesus. But when men rebel against what God has said, and the wages of sin brings death, now things have changed. You know what Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel done during their ministries? They Judah, they prepared them for the wrath of God coming by speaking out what God has told them to say, and then God brought the judgment. What God is telling me is go to them, read my Bible, read my word, tell them what is coming, give them an opportunity to say, Hey, I don't want to go there, and offer them the hope, the blessed hope, the glorious hope of the coming of our Lord and God, the Lord Jesus Christ. But rest assured of miserableness if you choose to reject this message that God, this is God's words again that I am preaching. This is not my words. This is not religion. If you choose to reject the message that you heard today, for he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. You have heard the words of the eternal truth, of the eternal life, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel. You are now condemned. If I were to tell you right now, that red sign over there says stop. You are to come to a complete stop. After coming to a complete stop, then you can go on. And if a cop checks, if a cop gets you and sees that you do not come to a complete stop, and you go through that stop sign, you cannot complain about the ticket you're going to get because you now know that that's a stop sign and you need to. And that cop is an all right to give you that ticket for you to pay. And yet I'm telling you that there is a way, there is a truth, and there is a life to heaven, to the Father, and that is by the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you choose to continue to go away, you're going. If you choose to believe in anyone besides Jesus Christ, if you choose to trust in anything besides the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God says you can't come in, when Jesus says depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. The Lord I never knew. And then somehow, some way, Daytona Beach Farmer's Market is going to come back, somehow, and you're going to hear this loud mouth voice again. And this loud mouth voice at your judgment stand before God is going to proclaim, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're without excuse. You cannot say, I never knew. And you have heard Acts 16, 30, and 31 here over and over and over. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I didn't say religion. I didn't say stocks and bonds. I didn't say grandma. I didn't say preacher. I didn't say Baptist. I said believe on the Lord I didn't say president. I didn't say election.
Since I didn't say the United States of America, I said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And how many of you vendors producing every producing produce all the stuff that God has given you from the ground and have not even thanked the God that you hear preach to you willingly, trialingly, week after week after week after week.